Hello everybody, in this episode I'm going to be showing how to do pretty much basic audio mixing in Premiere. It's kind of more on a simplistic level. On a future episode I'll have a little bit more complex uh, tutorial on how to send audio to Audition and how to do a little bit more complex audio mixing and auditioning on audio cleanup. But this I'm kind of showing the basics in Premiere. So I've got a short project here, a short film project. It was actually a student project, a little one minute film that was shot. And they've done the basic edit on this and they haven't done any significant audio yet. Right now, we, that's what we're gonna be doing. So I wanna show, first of all, if we're gonna be setting up for audio inside of Premiere, uh, one thing I wanna show is your track height. Because your track height's gonna be very important to doing basic mixing here. First of all, right now I am at kind of standard track height with everything kind of pulled down and I'm going to increase my track height. First of all, if you hit shift plus, that's gonna increase your video and audio here I'm gonna hit plus a couple times to zoom up and show you this let's move down the timeline here and then you will see these waveforms here on your audio it increases your video and your audio track if you hit shift minus it brings it back to the, this uh, standard flattened track height here but if you want to see audio waveforms you're going to hit shift plus and bring your your track height up to at least standard Another way of increasing track height, if you don't want to bring your video track height up at your audio so you have a little bit more space I'm gonna hit shift minus and now if I want to bring up the track height of audio only, that is going to be Option or Alt on a PC. Alt plus will bring up the track height. And you can keep hitting plus and it will make it larger and minus will make it smaller. Once again, if you hit Shift plus, it brings everything up. If you hit Shift minus, it brings everything back down. Command or Control on a PC plus or minus will increase video track height. And then Alt plus and Alt minus will increase and decrease audio track height. Right now I just like working in a standard track height here, so I'm gonna hit Shift Plus and bring them both up so I can see the thumbnails on the video as well. And then I'm gonna to go to the beginning of the video track here. Okay, one way to arrange for audio mixing is by clicking their little audio arrangement up here. If you hit that, it will arrange your, it will arrange your timeline and your visuals and your meters here for doing an audio mix. And this way you will be able to see all the meter, metered levels of all your audio tracks that you're working with down in your timeline. Now another little feature here for turning audio up and down on a basically globally, which means for the entire clip here, you will have, as long as your track height is increased and you can see your audio waveforms, you should see this little line right here. If you do not see that line and your track height is increased, your audio keyframes might be turned off. You can go to the wrench here, click on that, and make sure that this says show audio keyframes. If that's not checked, you will not see that line. So I'm gonna check mark that again. And there we go. And those lines are available. Now what this little line here is, is this is basically a line to turn your volume level up or turn it down. If you, I'm gonna zoom up here, plus, plus a couple times. I'm gonna move the mouse until it brings up this little double arrow right here. And now you can simply grab this line and click hold it, and drag up or down. And as you do that, you'll notice right below, it'll show how many decibels you are increasing your audio by. Now keep in mind that this basically has a six decibel limit that you can increase your audio by, which sometimes if you have really quiet audio, isn't going to be enough. You can turn this down all the way to infinity to while it's completely quiet, or you can crank it up and it will give increase six decibels of volume. And basically what six decibels will do is as you're playing here, this is going to be our audio track one here. We hear audio playing, and it's really, really low. It's playing around negative 30. This audio was intentionally, intentionally recorded at a low level to have a higher dynamic range. So one way of getting around that, if your audio is too quiet, you're going to be able to right-click on an audio file and go up to Audio Gain and increase that. Where we want this is at, right now it's showing, and right-click on this and say Audio Gain. This will boost your audio by however many decibels you want it to boost it by. Right now it says that my peak amplitude is at negative 21 decibels. If you hit zero, zero is where audio peaks and you don't ever want to go above zero. And usually on a stereo mix like this, you're going for around negative 12. Negative 12 is where we are mixing for on a stereo mix. That doesn't mean everything has to hit negative 12. That means kind of not your average audio, but your listenable audio level is going to be around negative 12. Dialogue usually is going to be pumping up around uh, negative 12 when they're talking. Uh, when things start to get loud, you're going to be around negative 9, negative 6, and the sounds that are super, super loud are going to be up close to zero. So if you have like explosions or really loud gunshots that are close, close up, then they're going to hit around zero, but never hitting zero. But everybody talking, just average audio level for dialogue is gonna be pumping up around negative 12. So right now that the peak amplitude on this file here is right around negative 21. So right now it's playing right around here. So for kind of louder audio, that's not really quite cutting it. So I'm gonna to have to bring that up 
let's see, negative 21, and I need to get up to negative 12. So 21 minus 12 equals 9. So I'm going to want to boost this by about 9 decibels. I'm going to hit 9, hit Enter, and look at the peaks move up there. And now we've got more audio level. Hey, buddy. And that's still not bringing the audio levels up enough, so I'm going to right-click on this again. And there we go, and that brings the audio level up a bit more. And one other thing I should mention here is, uh, in Premiere, I've noticed with my audio layout, it doesn't have what I consider my standard audio master level meter right here. I'm going to bring that up. I'm going to go under Window and check mark Audio Meters and tell it to show my audio meters. I'm going to go in between here, grab this, and drag it over so I have a little bit more. I'm going to go in between here, grab this, and drag it over so I have a little bit more space to show my audio meters. What these channels are here in your audio clip mixer are showing the individual audio levels of individual channels down here. A1 is going to show my audio 1 channel. A2 will show, down here will show my audio levels there. This is going to show my master audio, which is all these audio levels mixed together to show a final audio level. Hey, so as buddy. we play this, right now I notice it's about the same level as this because that's the only audio track I have playing right now. One other thing I want to show before we get started on this mix is the difference between what we call a mono file and a stereo file. I'm going to go and grab a file here. I've got some music in here, some pre-made music. I'm going to grab one and just drag and drop it in here. We have a couple different colors here, first of all. First of all, we've got this blue audio. This blue audio channel here basically shows that it is connected to video. Right here, if you select this video, notice it selects the audio with it that belongs to it. This, these audio, audio files have been synced and exported out as ProRes files, so now they are synced. Anytime you click a video file, it selects the audio file with it. Right here, select the video file, it selects the audio file with it as well. So that blue basically means that this belongs to this video clip. This green color means that this is independent of a video clip. This is a standalone independent audio file. And right now it's music. Let's play this together, the music together with the audio. So we play this, you can see that the audio channel 2 is going up to about 12 about negative 12 decibels there, and this is kind of down low. So right now the music's really hot, really loud, but that's fine. I'm just showing how this works. One other thing I want you to notice here is I zoom up on this here. This file right here, notice how it has one waveform. This file down here, this individual channel here, has one waveform and two waveforms. This has two waveforms there. That's because this is essentially a stereo track, and this is a mono track. Most systems that we're working on, like regular computer systems, will have two speakers. Now over here, you'll notice as I play, you'll have a channel that's pumping up here and a channel pumping up here. That is playing the left and right channel. With the music playing right now, basically this is your left channel, this is your right channel. And this music was mixed as a stereo mix. So the left channel is a little different than the right channel, and they play at different levels. And you'll have different sounds going to each channel depending on the music mix. This file right here, though, is a mono file. This file plays one single channel of audio and sends it to both left and right. When you're playing in a stereo environment, which we're doing in here, it is playing one single audio file and sending it to both left and right, and it will play at the same level in both left and right. I'm going to solo this channel here. By the way, these here, this is your mute. That'll mute a single track, and this will solo a track, which means it'll play this track and nothing else. I'm going to hit solo right now so it plays just this track. So right now, this track is muted. As I play, notice it plays both levels at the exact... The, it plays this track mono track to the left and right channels at the exact same level. There's no difference in there. But with the music, let's solo the music and unsolo the the movie track. Notice notice that these play at different levels. The music plays at different levels there. That's the way it was mixed. So a stereo track and a mono track. Usually audio that you're editing from the movie itself from the the re recorded synced audio from the film should be in mono because it usually will be recorded in one single mic. If there are two mics, it will usually be two mono tracks as opposed to one. And I lied, there's actually a couple more things I want to show before we actually start doing the, the audio mix on this. I want to show, let me turn off my solo there, I want to show, I want to show crossfades and fade-ins. I'm going to go to the beginning of my clip here. We have some audio at the very beginning, very quiet. Say we want to add a fade-in. One way we can do that is we can add an effect. There's a transition called a crossfade. 
And the way you add that is you land on an edit that where you want that crossfade to happen. If I land at the very beginning here and you hit, now remember on video, if you hit Command D or Control D on a PC, it will add a cross dissolve on your clip or fade in. Command D, there you go. So if I want to add it on my audio, it's actually Command or Control on a PC, Shift D. So Command Shift D or Control Shift D will put a crossfade right on the audio clip. This is called constant power. It basically turns it directly up from here at this point to this point. So right now it's quiet and it will gradually get louder. It will fade in right there. Now if you do this on an actual edit, I'm going to arrow down. By the way, if you want to land on an edit, I'm going to arrow up to go to the beginning, arrow down, arrow down, arrow down. Arrow. That way it lands on an edit. And you want to put a cross dissolve between two files here. Command Shift D. What this will do is it will start fading this clip up earlier here. And after this edit here, it will start fading the other one down and while it is fading this file down. So the file to the left will be fading down while the other one is turning up. This is also called an, called an envelope because in, uh, in audio mixing, when you add a crossfade, it is actually, uh, it'll, you'll see this shape of a line that's moving uh, from left to right and one going down and it creates like a, the back of an envelope shape and that's why they call them envelopes. It's just because of the shape of that crossfade shape. And now the last thing I want to show before we actually start doing the mix on here is adding keyframes. And keyframes is turning your volume up and down over time here. Say, let's go to this uh, music file right here and I'm going to go right to my line right here. So if you grab this line and you turn it down and you pull it down like this, it's going to turn down the entire audio file. But say you want it to get quiet during one part and turn up during another part. You're able to use keyframes to do such. So I'm going to hold down command, it's control on a PC. I'm going to find the portion where I want this to start turning down. I'm going to click and that will add a keyframe right there. I'm going to move down the line here and click again. And at this point, if I grab this keyframe and drag it down, notice it will be playing at normal level and then here it will start turning down. Now if I want it to turn back up, I can hold down Command, add another keyframe, add another one. And at this point, it will start turning up, up to this point. And then we'll be at that decibel level. Let's solo that and kind of listen to it. So watch the audio, watch the audio level as it hits. Turns down, plays low for a minute. And here it will gradually start turning up. Another thing you can do with keyframes is you can select two keyframes by holding shift and notice it has selected this keyframe here and this one is selected as well. Let me deselect those and show that. So click to select one keyframe, hold down shift, click to select another keyframe. And now if I move one of these keyframes, notice it moves them together in proportion there. So we move them back and forth. You can crank these up or if you can grab these ones here. If this is too quiet here, you can grab this keyframe, hold down shift, select that one and you can grab this keyframe and turn those two up or down right there. And then it's a little bit louder for this portion right there. I'm going to unsolo that. Actually, I'm going to delete my music here because we're going to start mixing now. Okay, for, so my first step is the initial cleanup. I'm going to play through this and uh, two goals here is conforming your audio levels so they sound decent to get everything or mix for negative 12. That's when they're speaking or being kind of loud. You can get their audio around negative 12 and we're going to clean this up a little bit. So initial stage is cleanup. I'm going to play through this and right now my audio is super, super quiet and you can't really hear anything because there's not much going on right now. So I'm going to bring up the general gain on these, uh, on these audio levels here. I'm going to grab all these here. Right there, I'm gonna grab this first strip right here where there's not much going on. I can hear kind of that newspaper wrinkling a little bit, just a little bit, but this is too, too quiet. I need to bring that up a little bit. I'm going to right click on all these clips and go to audio gain, and we're going to increase that. I'm gonna take them up by about like, uh, let's, I'm guessing about 15 decibels because these are pretty quiet. Now let's listen. Now we can hear the ambient noise. It's up to a listenable level. Have the newspaper hitting around negative 30 to negative 24, that works. So let's go to the beginning. Now that we've got those uh, those files audio gained there, I'm going to play through the beginning here. And I hear somebody whispering, probably behind the camera saying something. So listen to this. Or it's a ghost, I don't know what that is. So I'm going to actually grab this entire audio clip here. I'm going to hold down Option to deselect it from the video or Alt on a PC and click on this video. Notice how it just selected that video or that audio, not the video. I'm going to hit delete. And I'm going to grab this one here. I'm going to hold down option 
If you don't hold down Option, you'll try to move it over and it won't let you trim it over because it's locked to this video track here and it butts up against that one. So hold down Option, grab this, and then pull this over. Let's go to the beginning and see if that audio works. We hear the action. That's fine, but this audio is a little bit more usable here. So I'm going to cut off the action. I'm going to hit C for my razor tool. Hold down Option so it doesn't affect the video above it. Click. Hit V for my eraser or for my selection tool. Hold down Option. Select this clip and delete. Now I could actually borrow a little bit of this audio to fill in over here. So this is all part of the cleanup process. So what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to turn off my video track here, and I'm going to hit In Point and play through this. Out Point, and I'm going to hit Command C and copy or Control C and copy on a PC, and I've just copied this little section of audio right here. I'm going to uh, clear my out point there. Option X on a Mac or Control Shift X on a PC will clear your in and out point on your timeline. I'm going to get hit Home, go to the beginning, and Command V or Control V to paste. So I just brought some audio from here and pasted it at the beginning. I'm going to zoom into this, plus plus, and expand that, to fill up the rest of that time there. And as I play. I hear a little bit of shift in, uh, in the audio and a little bit of the action finishing off. So I'm going to trim this. Actually, we could roll edit that. I'm going to hit N for roll edit. I'm going to lock my video track so I stop editing my audio track. That's a good thing to do is just lock your audio or lock your video track so you can't manipulate it. I'm going to grab this here with my roll edit, which is N for shortcut, or you can come over here and select it. I'm going to roll this over just to get rid of that echo a little bit. Let's go to the beginning. And that sounds good, but I can hear a little cut there which is fine. So I'm going to just add a quick crossfade, arrow up to land on the edit, command or control, shift D, and add that crossfade. Let's listen to that. That sounds pretty good. Very smooth. So your first goal is to go through your timeline and clean up your audio, get the levels. I should say one, get your levels adjusted so they're around negative 12. And right now I'm these, nothing loud has happened, so they're not up around negative 12, but for dialogue and other things, you'll want it up around, you're going to be mixing for negative 12. The second thing I'm doing is making sure, is mixing these things to make sure that they are all at the, the proper level, and then I'm uh, cleaning things up. I'm taking out unnecessary sounds, making things sound smooth from the, while they play. Here, let's show a couple of examples. As we come to the candy machine, he hums, and that's loud enough. And he says, ooh, that's around negative 18. I'm going to bring these ones up just a little bit. We got some machine noise, but we're going to show you a way of cleaning that up. I'm going to bring these ones up to, I'm going to bring them up about four more decibels. Let's see when he says ooh now. Ooh. And it cuts off his ooh right there. I'm going to select this audio track. And right now I've got my video locked, so I don't have to hold down option and click. I can just click on the audio and delete, since I'm not going to be editing visuals here. Now I'm going to grab this and trim this over. Now watch what happens. Ooh. There we go. The audio goes down there because I didn't gain this one. So I'm going to grab the audio from the rest of this scene here until he runs around the corner. So this is a different this is a different scene now. I'm going to grab these ones. Let's see how much I brought the audio up on this. I'm going to go to audio gain. I brought it up by 19 decibels. So I'm going to select these two. Audio gain these by 19 decibels. That might be too loud. Let's see how loud it is here. Yoink. And notice his audio reaches up above negative six, way loud. So I'm going to right click on this one specifically, audio gain, and bring it down by about, let's go about by negative four and see where the yoink is now. Yoink. It's still hitting up around negative six, just a little bit more down, negative three, bring it down negative three, yoink. and that's hitting right around negative 12. So that's kind of a loud yoink, that's good. I'm going to right click on this one, turn it down about negative four, okay. And now I want this to sound, these transitions to sound a little smoother here. So as we play through, my first walks up, listen. You hear a little shift in the audio there as it does the cut. I'm going to arrow up and land on that. Command Shift D or Control Shift D on a PC and, listen, and add a crossfade. That sounds good, very smooth. Ooh. Next cut, right there you hear an obvious shift. Arrow down, Command Shift D, arrow down, Command Shift D. And this one's a little too long. It's going to have his audio turned down there. I'm just going to shorten that so it's kind of away from his yoink. Grab this one, move it over, and let's listen to that. Yoink! 
and there we go. So this is the mixing process, basically. Uh, there's some points where you might need to turn audio up and down. I'm going to mix a, a lot more of this here, and then I'm going to come back. So let's move on to another part where we need to actually do a little bit more significant mixing here. Right here at the end, where he gets punched. Hey, buddy. We'll add some sound effects later. He gets punched, and the audio needs to be brought up a little bit there. So it's very loud here and very quiet, and, and a little bit quieter here. Hey, buddy. So we want this all brought up around negative 12. When he yells, hey, buddy, we maybe want that between negative 12 and negative 6. Hey, buddy. So right now it's between negative 18 and negative uh, 12. So we're going to bring that up to uh, by about 8 decibels. Let's try that and see how it works. Audio gain 8. Hey, buddy. And now it's up around negative 12, between negative 12 and 6. That's good. <coughs> when he gets punched, I want that a little bit louder. So I'm going to mix this. I'm going to add a keyframe back here, one here, one here, one here. This is for a gradual fade up, and then it will play the sound loud and a gradual fade down. So I'm going to grab this here in between and move it up. All you have to do is just, uh, un I did undo there. I'm going to move it to where you get this little double arrow in between right there. Grab that and drag it up and turn up just that section. So now as we play through, now the punch is above negative six, the, the, the grunting noise. Uh, we're going to add sound effects to this later, of course. And as we play through this, let's move along. Are you okay? Right here he says, and this isn't the greatest audio, the microphone wasn't very close to him. Hey man, are you okay? He says, hey man, are you okay? And it's under negative 12. I'm going to do the same here. Turn this up a bit. Like that. Hey man, are you okay? Still a little louder. Hey man, are you okay? Pretty sure wild, man. And that needs to be up the rest of the time. Wild, man. There we go. So I'm going to go through the, that's my first step there. Going through the entire project, cleaning up audio, getting rid of little clips that we don't need. I can do some roll edits. I did a little bit of what's called, I trimmed some audio over so to get rid of audio that I didn't need. I've got all the levels about where I want to. Once I get all the levels where I want to by audio gaining and mixing and cleaning up, we're going to move on to the next step. So I'm going to finish this and come back and I will start on the next step, which is adding ambient noise. Okay, so the next stage here is going to be adding ambient noise. I'm going to show how to add extra tracks here. I'm going to tilde over my, that's the tilde is the key above the tab key. I'm going to tilde over this window and go larger here so you can take a look. This is my finished basic cleanup here. And I've added a couple other things down here where I needed to add some, mix a second noise where it fades in and out of a noise here to, tr to help this transition here just with some ambient noise and some extra noise. So I've got this all cleaned up. I'm going to be using these tracks down here for my ambient noise. If you need to add audio tracks, by the way, I'm going to go down to my bottom track right here in the gray area on the side. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say add track. It's going to add another stereo track or mono track. It's a mono stereo track that you can do down, down below. So now I've got another one. I'm going to do even one more. I'm going to need more than that eventually. So I'm going to hit Shift Plus to, and activate these tracks here to be able to edit to them. And now I'm going to be adding ambient noise. Oh, I quickly want to talk about where you can get sound effects and ambient noise. You can go out and record your own outside if you wish, or if you wish to download them, there are a couple websites where you can find ambient noise and sound effects. These are a few good websites. I'm going to put post these on, on in, under the description here so you can find these. These are some of the better ones I've found, found here. It is uh, freesound.org, soundbible.com, uh, sweetsoundeffects.com, soundj.com, and superflashbros.net. They've got this AS3SX or FXR website that has a bunch of sound effects you can use. So those are some good websites. I will post those on the description so you can click on them. You'll have to go there. It's kind of tedious. You'll have to go to those sites. You'll have to search for specific sound effects that you want and specific ambient noises. And once you find those, you can download them and use them. I've got some here that I've downloaded that I'm using. I've got this school university uh, noise here. I've already downloaded the ones that I need. There, I've downloaded a couple things actually. Downloaded a room tone for the hallway that comes across really loud but this is going to but it will work well cuz we can turn it down to where we need it and school university double click on it <laughs> we can hear people talking in hallways 
So I'm going to use these sounds here to add my ambient noises. I'm going to kind of try to bring this to life a little bit by grabbing the univer school university. I don't want this beginning part which is really loud. I can see some loud waveforms. So I'm going to hit in point right there and out point toward the end, out. I'm going to grab this section in between here. I'm going to grab that audio, drag it down to my A3 file. I'm using these two here for my basic sound mix off of my, my shoot. And then this track down here, A3, I'm going to use for ambient noise. I'm going to go to the beginning. Right now, right now it plays very loud. This audio is playing around negative 12, way too loud for just background ambient noise. I'm going to grab my volume control and turn this down. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to audio gain and go negative decibels. I'm going to negative 15, take it down 15 decibels. Let's play it. That's much better, but it's still too loud. So now that I've turned it down about 15 decibels, I have a little, little more control here. I'm going to grab the volume, and I'll just turn it down a few more decibels. Let's go to the beginning. And that sounded about right. You really have to listen to this when you have your speaker set at negative 12. You have to kind of set your speakers so they're loud enough so you can hear what it sounds like juxtaposed against the other audio that you're using. I'm going to go to the beginning of this, turn off this track and this track. So I just added dissolved this one. Command Shift D to fade it in. There we go. And I'm going to go audio gain. I'm going to turn that down maybe about four more decibels and see what we get. There we go, and that really brings that to life there. When it transitions to the hallway, this is a different location. So I'm going to turn my tracks back on here. I'm going to arrow up and down until I land right on that edit. I'm going to trim this back here because I don't need that much audio. There we go. Trim that back, and I'm going to start a different audio here. I'm going to grab room tone. I'm going to grab that and drag it. I'm going to put it in my source monitor. Notice there's a little fade in at the beginning. I'm just going to put an in point. Out point, grab this. If you grab this little symbol right here, you can drag it right down to your timeline where you can set it up to edit down in. Now, as we play from this to the clip to the next one, that's way too loud. It sounds like a huge warehouse. I'm going to audio gain and turn this down by about 20 decibels. So, as now as we cut, now I have that room tone playing in the background with the machine. And the machines are really loud here. So I want to clean things up. Actually, let's get to the end of the scene here. Right there. And hit C for my razor blade. Cut. V for my selection tool. Select this. Delete. So now that ends. And now we'll need more ambient noise here. And you'll have to decide what ambient noise best suits each scene as it cuts from scene to scene. And that's the next step there. Now say I want to clean up this audio here. This where it requires another program. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but this is something that is very helpful. I want to get rid of some of that machine noise. I'm going to right click on this audio and I'm going to send it over to Adobe Audition. I'm going to edit the clip in Adobe Audition. It's a cool little trick here. It sends it over to Adobe Audition. This is destructive audio editing. It replaces it with the Adobe Audition file and anything you affect in Adobe Audition will fix it in Premiere and it's destructive so you can't undo that in Premiere. So now I'm going to play through this clip here. It brought over the audio clip here in Audition. I'm going to hit play. I'm going to find a section where I can hear just the machine rumbling and nothing else. And that seems like a good little area right there. I'm going to click and drag and play. And that sounds like a good little area where there's just machine noise. So I'm going to go up to Effects. I'm going to go to Noise Reduction and I'm going to capture the noise print of that little area right there. I captured it. I'm going to deselect. Select all. Command A will select everything. Now that I've uh, memorized that little noise print, I'm going to go to Effects, Noise Reduction, Capture Noise, or and, and go to Noise Reduction Process right here. And that's going to take, based on that sound, it's going to reduce that machine noise from the background as best possible. You don't want to be too destructive here or it will damage your audio. So I play. It got rid of a good portion of that, but I'm going to turn down the noise reduction here so I can hear a little bit of warbly noise that it's also affecting the audio a little too much. I'm going to bring down the, the gain of that and the noise reduction processing down to maybe 64%. Let's try that out. And that helped it. So that helped it a bit, but it's, it's not perfect, but that, that's helping it a bit. It's really killing a lot of that machine noise. I hit apply, and you can see the reduction that's taken place. 
I'm going to hit Command S and it will save it. You gotta have, you gotta do Command S to save it. Go back to Premiere and it will update it with the fixed file. And that sounds a lot better. Now I'm actually hearing this ambient noise down here and not the machine as much. So I'm going to do the same thing to these clips. Right click. I'm going to leave, so I can remember that noise print, I'm going to leave Audition open. I'm going to edit a new clip in Audition. And here's a new one. I can hit Command A since it's remember the last noise print. Go under Effects, Noise Reduction, Noise Reduction Process. That sounds a lot better there. I'm going to turn up, I'm going to increase the gain on this. Hit Apply. Didn't clean it out completely. That's a lot of noise, but it did a pretty good job of make, not making it so strong. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to do that to the rest of these files here. You have to do, do them one by one. Apply that. Save it to Command S, and now I can actually quit Audition. Save all those files. Close it. Yoink. Now I can actually turn this audio ambient noise down a little bit. I'm going to go down about negative four more. Yoink. And listen to it with and without the ambient noise. Ooh. That's with the ambient noise. That's without. Yoink. And there we go. Now I'm going to add the rest of the ambient noise to the rest of this track, and we'll come back and show you the next step. Next step is adding sound effects. Now there are some sound effects in here, like we've got a little scene here. Look at the scene where he grabs the wallet out of his hand. This needs a major color correction, but he grabs that wallet out of his hand. I want to add a whoosh noise right there, make this a little bit comedic. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit tilde. I'm going to use this fourth audio track for doing sound effects, and maybe the fifth as well. So I'm going to hit shift minus, bring everything down, and I want to bring up just the track height of the fourth audio track. I'm going to mouse over this and scroll up, and it will increase the track size for four and nothing else. So now I'm going, and that way I've consolidated everything down to this kind of condensed track, and now I can start doing sound editing onto track four here. I'm gonna turn off track three so I can edit to track four. And let's find a whoosh. So I've got this golf swing that I'm gonna use as a whoosh. I'm gonna play through this. There it is. I'm going to, I don't need an in and out point on this, but I can, I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna drag it and drop it down right about where it needs to be. So right there, I've laid the whoosh right there, that golf swing right there. But I want the whoosh to happen right about there. So I'm actually I'm going to select this track. I'm going to hit Command on a Mac and arrow right. And this will move this over one frame at a time. And with the PC, with the PC, this is Alt. You hold down Alt and arrow left and right. And it will move it over one frame at a time. And get it right there. So right when he grabs the, grabs the wallet, it'll go whoosh, like that. Let's listen to that. Okay, the timing of that works really well. The audio is way too loud. I'm going to right click on this, audio gain, I'm going to turn it down by about six decibels. Let's, I'm going to solo this just to see the level of it, or I can actually go to my audio meter up here and look at it. And it's, uh, that's still hitting around negative 12. That's pretty loud. Let's see what it sounds like juxtaposed against the this, against everything else. And that, actually, that sounds about a good level right there. So there's one sound effect. Let's show a couple other sound effects. So here's a punch right here. I've got some noises for punches here. I'm going to go through the whole thing and add all my sound effects. I'm going to have to download them and then come over here and, and edit them in. I'm going to grab this kick with whoosh. I know this is a good punch noise. I'm going to grab this one right here specifically. I'm going to play through this clip. That's a good crunchy noise. Actually, that one's pretty good too. I'm going to go to the beginning. I'm going to put an in point, play, out point, and I'm going to drop it on the, I've got this timeline. I've got four selected, so it will edit to four and not A1, two, or three. I'm going to hit period to overwrite. So I've got four activated. I'm going to actually assign this to edit down to this track down here. So I'm going to hit period, drop that in, and it edits it down to that timeline there. And obviously that's not timed right, so I'm going to select this track. I'm going to get it right where kind of the zenith of the punch noise is. I'm going to hit down command or alt on a PC, arrow left, or I mean right, sorry, and get it right there. This is the whoosh leading up to it, and that's the punch noise. Let's play through it. That's good, but way too loud. Notice it peaked, it hit zero in the red. I'm going to right click, go to audio gain, negative eight about. A little bit louder. Audio gain, going to increase it by two decibels. And actually, I'm going to put a little bone crunch in there. I'm going to use audio track five as well. 
and drop a little bone crunch noise in there, which make this really brutal. A bone crunch, right there, out point. Grab this, put it down in my timeline. I'm going to move this over right there. And there's two crunches there. I'm just going to get the set. I'm going to trim that back so I just get the second crunch. And the bone crunch is way too loud. Audio gain negative eight. And we get a little crunch. Now it's all mixed around almost between negative six and zero. Very loud, but very effective. There we go. So that's the next step, is to add your sound effects, get them lined up, and get them mixed as well. Every time you add noises, you mix them. I'm going to add all the sound effects, I'm going to come back, and then we're going to do the final step. So the last step is adding music. And, I've got a, and if you've got a composer, you're going to have uh, music composed for this. If you're going to be using uh, music that you're taking off, uh, off, off of the internet, there are some resources here. One of the best places, I'll also put this into the uh, description, into the, into the description, is a website called Incompetech.com. I'm going to be crediting the music that I'm using in here to Incompetech. A lot of their songs are royalty, for, are royalty free as long as you credit them and you're not using them for profit. Uh, but this was a good website to find music. I'm going to find some music. I've already grabbed some music from Incompetech, and I'm going to be adding the music to this and mixing it as well. Got some music here. I'm going to option double click on this and listen. And listen to the very first part here. What kind of music do I want at the beginning? I like this kind of dark, ominous music here at the beginning. Right before it picks up here. I'm going to grab that portion of the music out point and I'm going to assign audio track six, hit period, and drop it down in. Let's listen to this. I'm going to get at the beginning of the, of the movie, scroll up my track size a little bit here. Trim the beginning off of that. It's a little too loud. I'm going to turn it down. There we go. We've got the ambient noise. We've got the music playing. Everything's sounding nice. Okay, right here, Ooh. there's a little breaking point in the audio right there, and then it kind of shifts directions. This is right before he gets everything stolen. So what I'm going to do, or he gets his wallet stolen, so I'm going to go down to this point. I'm going to grab this audio. I'm going to drag it back. I'm going to trim that just so about another frame there. So it kind of looks like it has a natural fade off there. Let's see. Ooh. And that actually sounds pretty good. If we need to fade that out a little bit more, I can do Control-Shift-D. Fade it out. Ooh. There we go. And then the action movie music starts right there. So what I'm going to do is grab my action music here. Actually, I think it's on the same track. Right here. Right there. Right there, I want the mu this music to time up with when he starts running. Right there, I'm going to put an in point, kind of a random out point there. I'm going to get this to where he starts running, right here. And that's right when I want that action music to start. I'm going to grab that, drive it right there. So when he starts running, that's right where the danger music starts. But I'm going to grab this and back time it and get kind of that danger music that happens before and see what I get here. That works pretty well there, but now the audio is too loud. I'm going to audio gain, go negative eight about. And I'm going to mix these two together. Actually, I'm going to get rid of that fade, in, fade out there, and I'm going to pull these together and blend them together. Command Shift D, and it'll across. Let's see how this sounds. Let's see if we can make this work. And that doesn't really work, so I'm going to hit N for my roll tool, move this back a little bit, see if we can find kind of a blending point here. Let's try right there. I roll edited that back, add a cross dissolve, we'll make the add a crossfade, make this a little bit longer. Need to make that shorter, that doesn't sound as good. And actually that doesn't sound too bad there. Just needs to turn down, and then it's gonna mix louder once the action starts. And right here, I want it to turn up. 
right when he pulls the wallet. So we're going to mix that up. Even louder. There we go. And there we go. And I can stretch this out, make it last longer. Let me show one more little trick here. So we're making this music sound like it was written for this movie. I'm going to move to the end where he finally pulls the wallet, of a, wallet out of his hand. And where he smacks him, I want the music to stop and kind of change here. So I'm going to arrow this back a little. I'm going to trim this backwards a little bit. I'm going to go up to my music and see if this music kind of has an ending. And there's a good ending right there. So I'm going to grab it portion of this off the end here, end point and out point, just the ending of the, of the music. I'm going to drag this down here, put it at the end. I'm going to make this end right where he slaps a face there. That ends. Now I just have to find a point to mix this big missing section together with the ending and the beginning of this music track. Actually, let's make that end when he has the, when his mouth drops right there. So I'm going to trim this backwards and see if we can find a spot to trim these together. I'm going to, let's see how much I turned this one down. I turned it down by negative eight decibels. I'm going to turn this one down by negative eight decibels and get the volume about the same level here. Hit N for my roll tool, roll this back and let's right, let's uh, land on this edit. Command Shift D, add a dissolve. See if that works. See if it blends those two together. Not too bad, it needs a little bit of work, but you can basically adjust the length of your crossfade there. I could also hit Y, which is a slip tool, and slip this over to the left or the right a little bit, and let's see what that does. Just a little bit to the left, about three frames. Play it. A little more this way. And actually, that sounds pretty good there. So I slipped that over by a few frames until I got that to time out a little bit better. We took a big chunk of music out of the middle there and made it look like the music was composed for this movie specifically. So I'm going to mix the rest of the mu music, then come back and, and show you the finalized version. Okay, so this is the finalized version. It's been color corrected. We've had some added some titles to it. We've got our full sound mix done. I've gone through and I played a final sound mix. Let's play a little bit of this and kind of see how it works at the beginning. Music fades in, ambient noise, color correction, kind of a cool look to it. Okay, it's looking good. That is pretty much the process there. So this, these are the steps that we pretty much followed here. We went through an initial cleanup and conforming the audio levels of the audio that belongs to the video that we edited. After that, we added ambient noise, then we added sound effects, period. Then we added music and performed a final sound mix. And as you add things, you of course you would perform a fi final sound mix to get everything at the level that you need them at. So if you have any questions, you can post them. And, and at the end of the tutorial here, I will play this, this minute and a half student project. And you can watch it and listen to the sound mix and see the color correction that's been done on it. And uh, yeah, so enjoy.
You okay? Thanks, man. <laughs>